And I remember yeah. like when like we were first when I was first like getting started in comics and um I had left my job as a teacher and like we were doing like rice and beans like yeah. three days a week. Yeah. And uh just making it happen and having like barely any money in the bank account. Yeah. And uh it was a special time because like, you know, you can't buy everything you want, but yeah. like I was doing what I loved and um and it was meaningful, right? It was meaningful. Yeah. But I can't say that I was any, like, less happy back then, and I'm more happy now. It's yeah. pretty much the same. Yeah. yeah. It's right. not... The relative amount of, like, money I have versus happiness has never really been a yeah. thing. The, how successful I am, same. Yeah. Know, it doesn't right. really change, you know? I still yeah. am struggling with a story beat. I still can't draw that elbow right. Right. You know, things like that. So, we're already uh, recording. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Um, so the way I usually start this thing, the point of this is not to talk about how to get a job or how to become a great artist or anything. It's more about the why of doing it. Okay. Yeah. And I, I meet a lot of people and I meet a lot of students who are focused way more on like the, like, how do I get the skills to make this thing to, to, to get followers and to get jobs and all that kind of stuff. But I think the question more so to ask is like, how do you keep it sustainable for like 40 years? You know? Oh, sure. Well, and, and like looking at like your art, like you, you've leaned into the stuff that I think is like, you know from your childhood and stuff mm -hmm. that like is, is pretty dorky and nerdy in a really great way and sure. i think it resonates with a lot of people and it's it's been really cool to see people like be able to make a sustainable life out of you know drawing robots and drawing like wrestlers and stuff yeah. and, and stuff but yeah do, 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 do you have any initial thoughts or anything on that or uh, somebody told me some artist at some point was talking to me about how um how to be sustainable and in, in the creative arts and um i think that was it, where they were saying that if you can keep the mindset of, of a kid or like being a kid uh, and keeping an op like that open mind and the like willingness to just like do stuff yeah that um, it'll like take you really far yeah and you'll have like you'd be maybe more open to ideas that pass through your, your head that maybe otherwise you would um, kind of like hide away yeah yeah so I don't know I mean I uh, I do I do kind of like rely on things that get me excited and a lot of that is stuff that would have gotten me excited as a kid too but yeah. um, things are always changing like I wasn't into pro wrestling when I was a kid yeah um, and so I think part of that too is like keeping this open like questioning mind uh, being willing to be excited about new things and dive in head first um, and like not hopefully not have too much of a self filter you know which yeah. is a problem for me when writing but with when it comes to ideas I feel like I'm pretty good at just yeah. diving in and being excited about something and worrying yeah. about the details later. Well, I, I feel like a big part is like letting go of the ego to the point where you're not worried about the failures because like, I, I think uh, as an artist and trying to be one professionally, you have to think about the practical side of living. Like sure. how do you pay bills? How do you pay rent? How do you, you know, take care of a family and all this stuff? Mm -hmm. and, like balancing that, you know, uh, desire to make money and keep it sustainable with the like childlike playful nature of it I think is that to me that's actually the hardest part of it you know yeah dude I um, think well part of it though is um, when I was first getting started in comics I was like willing to do whatever it took to get a gig yeah. and uh, I had a few gigs where they were fine but you know I could see myself burning out on making comics for a long time or I, I could see myself burning out on making comics quickly if I was to continue to just take whatever project kind of game came yeah. down the river and not really having any agency with the projects that I chose was would I could see like being a problem for me yeah. creatively and sustainable sustainably wise so that's one of the reasons that I chose to write and draw my own stuff is yeah. that I just did have way more agency and um you know, there were a few times where it's like, I, I would rather draw for fun and keep it pure and do a regular job yeah. than to continue on, you know, making art for other people. Yeah. Um, it's like, I want to make art for me, and then if people happen to jump on board, yeah, and that's awesome. And, you know, I don't know how long the chocolate fountain will continue yeah. flowing, but it um, seems like people are pretty excited about the vibe that I'm putting out for however long that lasts I'll be thankful yeah well I, I remember hearing I, I hear this all the time like you'll hear famous comedians or musicians whoever else talking about like oh in, in two months you won't forget who I am you know it's like and then 10 years later they're still extremely relevant and stuff sure. and I think one of the scary parts about trying to pursue this stuff professionally is you're relying completely on your own taste and people liking what you do yeah 
uh, in order to do it. And I, I think in, in a lot of ways, uh, being an artist is like an act of bravery more so than anything, just because like, um, you know that most people probably won't like your work, but then trying to hope that enough people like it to be able to, you know, keep it sustainable. And yeah, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sure you deal with your fair share of haters as well, you know? And, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. You know, I, sometimes the people for the most part are, are pretty polite. Yeah. Um, you know, as long as they're not tagging me yeah. in like Instagram or, you know, social media posts while they're trashing me, eh, have at have at it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> if yeah. it's a, I don't go on to Goodreads for a reason. Right. You know, people have very strong opinions on Goodreads. Ooh. Oh man, brutal. Yeah. Ooh. Well, I I feel it. I feel like it's being like synonymous with just being a person is that like to try and make this stuff work professionally is to like open yourself up to criticism. And I sure. think often like the interior brain thoughts of what people are going to say are often like way way worse than than, than the reality. Sure. You know? Um, yeah, uh, yeah, brain thoughts. Yeah. Uh, it's true, and nobody comes up and says that to me in person. Yeah, you know? yeah. And if they do say something mean, it's totally by accident. They yeah. they mean the best intention there, yeah. and you can read it on their face. You know, if it's like if you're if you're at all able to like carry on a conversation at a party, if somebody says something kind of weird, yeah. you're like, oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Well, I I, I think um, when it comes to all this stuff, like the. Uh, uh, putting yourself out there and, and like uh, knowingly doing it in spite of the like uh, the, the fear and the potential criticism and all, sure. all the risk involved. I think like over time, I think anyone can make this stuff work sustainably, whether it's an artist or a musician or whatever. It's just their ability to kind of keep on that path of being that playful person that is like removing themselves from the outcome in, in whatever way they can. Sure. And that's something I do try and do. Um, sometimes I do think, I, I mean, I am thinking about, financial stuff and yeah. what the market can bear and and not wanting to oversaturate and things like that but you know that is definitely secondary to like what i want to do yeah which is that's the main thought it's like what's going to get me excited what's going to what is which story is ready right um being okay with saying uh no to certain ideas that i have because they're just you know the story's not under my feet yet yeah um in order for me able to be able to run which is something that i kind of do when i make stuff is yeah. i just go yeah uh every, things have to kind of be in line yeah and like right yeah yeah uh, yeah that's uh, my neighbor's dog oh nice yeah well so so, so <laughs> part of the podcast is all the sounds and stuff is <laughs> cool yeah yeah so but yeah yeah I, I think um like setting up that environment and uh like like trying to do everything to set yourself up for success, like yeah. making sure your environment and your actual physical environment is not stressful and, you know, making sure you have a quiet, quiet place to draw and, you know, a quiet place to take risks and, yeah. and surrounding yourself with people that aren't going to like tear you down or, or anything. And sure. Stuff. And, yeah. Um, but yeah. It, it's like a, the more that I get into this stuff, the more I'm amazed by like the, the resource that's the most valuable is not like the, the shoulds, like, if if everyone did exactly what they should be doing, everyone would like every artist would just be like a technical, you know, architect, you know, draftsman or something. Yeah. You know, and the fact that anyone can like make a, a living from drawing like anime boys or from you know drawing wrestlers, I, I think it's incredibly inspiring and incredibly cool. Yeah, and, it's um, a big world. Yeah, um, with a lot of different interests and there's a room for everyone. I feel. Yeah. Um, and you know, I also feel like media or my, my media sounds so callous, but. I feel like the way that, sto you know, when making stories specifically, uh, which is what I do, um, you know, I like to design my stories in a way that you can come and approach them and then move on, you yeah. know, like a limited series or so, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And uh, in that way, there's a space for people to take it and digest it yeah. and then move forward into something else, you know, and, and be appreciative of what they experienced with me and my work in the past and not yeah. necessarily feel like they have to drag me along with them. Yeah, right. Um, that's something that's important to me in my creative endeavors is to be able to have a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. Have something that people can remember fondly and not have to worry about still engaging with in two years. Yeah, right. Um, and then hopefully I, the goal is to be known as a creator that provides a satisfying experience every yeah. time. Right. Um, and then that le gives room for that person, that reader, to enjoy other things in their kind of 
consciousness that they're experiencing you know i just don't want to take up too much space in people's minds yeah yeah just be nice and easy you know? it's like right. you come in you experience you move out yeah 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 like like i, I guess some ip is lasting for a thousand episodes or something or yeah. a thousand chapters and stuff and there's nothing wrong with that inherently yeah. i think there's, there's value to that i just yeah. it's not the stories i want to tell yeah yeah well i, I think making that stake in the sand i think is important you know i think uh Especially with AI nowadays, I, I'm really scared for new artists because I think it's really easy to get nihilistic about like, sure. like why should I create when AI can do it way faster and better or fast, faster and better, right? And um, I think more, like a lot of the value that artists provide is like that niche and that like personality to to do it in the way that they really want to be doing it. Yeah, you know. I think one thing to remember about AI art is that AI art only exists on the backs of what's come before. Yeah, and in yeah. some ways that's true of many upcoming artists you know wanting to emulate kirby or uh you know insert x yeah. artist here yeah. uh but you know ai does it in a way that is um there's no room for the new it's yeah. all it's all recycled and you know i think inherently that makes for a bad art yeah it's my personal opinion yeah <laughs> uh but you know I feel like new artists coming to the table, it's even more of a reason to try and break out from the norms and to create uh, art and lines and illustrations that are reflective of the person that they are inside. And that's a challenge for all artists, all visual artists, you know, taking what we have inside and putting it on the page in a way that hasn't been done before. Yeah. Because even before AI, like I said, like there were people that were like drawing exactly like other people for yeah. centuries, you know, Caravaggio had his hordes of yeah, hordes of apprentices of, of and apprentices and people were just like they see Caravaggio and then all of a sudden they yeah. their paintings start looking like Caravaggio with dark right. backgrounds you know yeah. um, so if anything I think maybe I'm hoping that AI art will challenge uh, the new generation of artists to continue breaking new ground in a yeah. way with the human eye and the human hand in a way that computers never can yeah because um, computers can't make something new they can only make what looks like before yeah, and so also makes it look so. like a photo yeah like if i wanted to something to look like a photo i'd take a photo yeah and uh you know it's just not interesting to me yeah maybe it'll be maybe it's interesting to the rest of the world i have no interest well i i feel like i feel like like success as a concept in general has a lot more to do with like i i think there's like your the shoulds in your life and the things you want to do you know and i think uh the shoulds of like oh man i shouldn't like oh, I, I can't do art because this particular niche that I wanted to get into is being handled by this, right. you know, AI or, or like whatever. And I, I think no matter what, there's always a reason not to paint, you know? Like, you know, you don't have enough time or you're not good enough or no, one, no one's going to care or any of that kind of stuff. And I think on a, like, no matter how successful you are, those reasons don't go away, true. you know? And I think true art is finding that purpose, you know, finding that reason to keep creating in spite of like the overwhelming pressure of like living and the difficulty of it, you know, yeah. <laughs> that's um, true. Yeah. Which includes AI. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and I, I mean, uh, we, we can get this out if you want, but you were telling, you were talking about the, the storm yesterday and how you had to shovel out poop water for an hour and a half. And oh, yeah. We can keep that in. Okay, cool. But, but it's My like, basement flooded. well, but, but like somebody might idealize you cause you know, you're a well-known comic artist, you're sure. able to make a living from it, but you know, you still have to shovel poop water out occasionally, <laughs> right? And it's like, you know, yeah. uh, or change diapers or anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, uh, Doing the do the dishes. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's like, just because somebody is well known or famous or they're able to do something that is kind of a rare profession, it doesn't mean that they're immune to like the like somewhat grosser parts of life, you know? <laughs> That's true. Um, yes, it was on full display yesterday. Yeah, yeah. But I, I and I mean, for, for me, like I'm living in this van and it's really hot a lot of the time and you know, it's, it's kind of gross sometimes as well. And, um, and, but I, like, I, I would rather be doing this than living in an apartment. And I, I actually can't even explain why I just, I just want to do it. Sure. You know? And, uh, yeah. And I, I think the the more somebody is able to lean into like the, then I, I'm not saying don't follow con conventions, but in follow their interests and push back against the conventions as much as they can. Yeah. You know, totally, man. Yeah. yeah. The more, the more successful, I think they'll be in general. But, yeah, and I feel like, yeah, like you said, like something makes you want to live in this van. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something right. makes me want to make stories, you know. Yeah. Something makes me want to draw, and uh, I do feel at my best when I'm doing something like that well. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of where, I don't know where my drive comes really, but um, 
that's part of it. Yeah. Well, I, I think I think it's almost actually impossible to decide where it comes from because I I, I I I believe that I am so complicated I can't even begin to explain myself. Sure. Know? It's like the reality of who we are is like from a super nihilistic existential point of view or like hurtling through space at 100,000 miles per hour on a tiny rock yeah. in, in a ball of plasma and like like why shouldn't you do the things you want to do if when you zoom out more and more like it, it's not like nothing matters but it's it's a lot less important to the stakes are lower yeah 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 exactly the stakes are a lot lower sure yeah, yeah I can see that yeah I feel like there's something out there I can't really put my finger on it yeah um, I'd like to hope there's something out there uh, yeah but I totally I get your vibe and it makes a lot yeah. of sense yeah and it's the most healthiest nihilistic way to be yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, 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 uh, uh, optimistic nihilism there you go stuff. yeah um, but yeah I, I think somebody be able to carve out a little life for themselves and you know have a sustainable life doing comics or making music or doing whatever I think is it, I think it's it really is possible for anybody agreed yeah. yeah I mean depending on you know like I feel like like you said like it's sustainability is the model yeah. so figuring out how to live in a way that will support the thing that you love to yeah. do it's, 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 an, it's a part of the challenge of being a creative person kind of paving your own path and yeah. uh, doing the things you want to do so that yeah. you don't have to take the gigs that are mind numbing or yeah. you know as much as I don't think I would enjoy working at Starbucks or a coffee shop or, or, or Home some, Depot or something yeah. exactly yeah. I would rather do that and keep drawing and creating things pure and like yeah. fun than like take a gig where after two years I hate the very thing that I used to love yeah. and used to drive me forward. You know, right. I would, I'm trying to be very protective of that and um, be mindful of projects and like the things I'm feeling that where it can start taking away from the very thing that I find joy in. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's really important to me, and it's happened before where I've burned out. You know, yeah. because of comics or the business or whatever yeah. and uh, I don't want to do that you know so I'm willing to walk away from something if it's really not the right fit yeah yeah well, I, I think everyone has to be prepared to do that and yeah. like I think it I mean you said earlier at some point in your career you were doing these like not tedious jobs but jobs that weren't as interesting and like something must have made you make that shift towards doing more creative and interesting things right? yes yeah. yeah it was well it was a book called Alabaster yeah and it just was a, a tough experience but, you know, one thing I must credit Alabaster with is that I would not have made Extremity, uh, my first kind of, like, long formish, 12 issues, uh, like, sci-fi fantasy book that kind of got my career started, really, yeah. as being known as a writer-artist. So yeah. I got to give that credit. Yeah. Like, that's a big deal. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I think um, often the the starts to having a really nice career doing something starts out pretty tedious and boring and sure. pretty pretty mundane sure. you know and i'm sure you can go back to you know maybe when you were like even like 17 or 18 writing some story that didn't seem relevant now that's like that's had a huge impact on your career at this point sure you know? and i think again part of being an artist is like looking at the things you're doing and not diminishing yourself and diminishing your efforts because it's not quite exactly what you want it to be in your dream reality you know mm. Mm. Um, and I, I like, uh, I, I really believe that, uh, that childlike thing, that childlike genuine interest that you're, that got you into art in the first place is like, again, following that generally leads to, to great things eventually, mm. you know? But, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I drew a lot of Deadpool as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of X-Wings. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it, I, I'm I'm try I'm always trying to keep my mind open to like what those things are and yeah. kind of tune into those things and be open to whatever new may be coming along. Yeah. Well, I I, I, I I guess moving forward, do you have any other like overarching goals or dreams of the things you want to try and accomplish? Or, um, I mean, in a perfect world, I I'd love to maybe make movies. Yeah. Um. You know, I. I love that medium, and it's a very intimidating kind of space to even think about getting involved in. I don't even yeah. like saying that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I can't lie. I am interested. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, I would love to write a story that somebody else draws. Yeah. Um, that's something that that's definitely a goal, which I feel is very achievable. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to continue making, I want to continue writing and drawing my own stuff. Yeah. And I just, I really, really love doing that. Yeah. 
I have not gotten tired of it since I did Extremity, since mm. I was doing Space Mullet. It's always been a joy. I mean, there's struggles. Yeah. But I have never really, like, gotten tired of it. Yeah. And, you know, capitalism would would kind of behoove me to, uh, you know, figure out a way to do less and make yeah. more money. Yeah. Um, which I think about, but, you know, it's like, so, but then in order for me to, like, make more money, I have to compromise. Yeah my vision or like the way that I approach making things yeah which I don't really want to do yeah Uh, I want more is more for me and I love making the lines I love making I need to be healthy about it I need to remember to do that but yeah I also just want to keep doing my own thing yeah and uh that usually includes uh staying the course and being mindful to change in the future but also you know remembering what it is that makes me happy in the first place well and I, I guess even you know talking to the people that I know that have had a huge amount of success like it doesn't get easier either you know it's not like the success you know makes you completely fulfilled you know no. it, it, it's not the end point and Mm-mm. i you know i think the human brain naturally tends to want more even if you were the most famous successful comic artist on the planet the next step is to become the next best director for movies or something you yeah. know and it's all relative it's just gonna feel the same if yeah. i were to, were to be successful in that i as uh you know i i love what i do and uh it's great being successful i just um you know it doesn't make me like happier yeah yeah right. yeah, yeah it, it, it makes it more sustainable to you know keep doing the thing that you're doing but and i remember you know. like when like we were first when i was first like getting started in comics and um i had left my job as a teacher and like we were doing like rice and beans like yeah. three days a week yeah and uh just making it happen and having like barely any money in the bank account yeah and uh it was a special time because like you know you can't buy everything you want but like i was doing what i loved and um and it's meaningful right it was meaningful but i can't say that i was any like less happy back then and i'm more happy now it's pretty much the same yeah it's not the relative amount of like money i have versus happiness has never really been a yeah thing the how successful I am, same. Yeah, you know, it doesn't right. really change. You know, I still yeah. am struggling with a story beat. I still can't draw that elbow right. right. You know, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I, I think for for me, it's like I'm I'm technically homeless. <laughs> you know, based off of like the legal definition. Sure. You know, and like I would rather be do, again doing this than really anything else. And I don't think if I, you know, a question that I, a question that I ask everybody is, would you be doing the same thing you're doing exactly right now if you had a billion dollars, or like could I pay you to stop doing the thing that you're doing? You mm-hmm. know. It's like, I don't think I could pay you a billion dollars to stop drawing. Like, I don't think so. Yeah, and it's like, that's a good sign. You know, you're, good you're sign. probably doing the right thing, you know? Yeah. And, um, like, I think if I had a billion dollars, I would travel. I've said this before, but I'd travel in, like, a Zeppelin or something, you know, some epic form of travel, like <laughs> Private Jet or the Sketchy Zeppelin podcast or whatever. Sure, yeah. And, but it would still be the fundamentally same thing. I'd be talking to people about the same message, maybe even the same people, yeah. you know, artists and painters and i guess creators of all all sorts and but the like the only thing that would change is the scale like i could advertise it as a at a bigger scale or sure. bigger guests or, or you know and all that stuff you yeah know? but uh i think like finding the thing that you'd be doing for free if you know no matter what i, I think that's that's like the juice you know? yeah dude yeah that's, that's the way you keep it like super fun and sustainable and heck yeah but yeah, um, uh, I don't know where to go from here, but now I need to get paid to golf. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, well, I, I think the other part of that is like not everything has to be like a money maker sure. as well. Like, um, I've been riding my bike and stuff, and I just bought a cello as well. And I don't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't suspect I'll ever be able to make money off playing the cello or uh, riding my bike. And I, I think I could figure it out if I really put the effort in. Yeah. But, I don't know if it's like worth it to me spiritually to try and try and do it that way. Mm. But yeah, yeah, this, hmm. yeah. If, if, if you had a billion dollars, would you like do some absurd, crazy project with it? Or, uh, well, this is embarrassing, but I'd probably build a um, a Trackman golf simulator <laughs> oh, yeah. heck yeah dude I, I you could do that for way less than a billion dollars yes yeah, so it's like <laughs> i was looking at the, i was like running the numbers it's like 30 grand or something like that yeah. and like i don't have enough space in my basement so yeah. i can't really do even do it in this house yeah um 
So, you know, I guess maybe buy a new house and then yeah, yeah, get a right, track right. It's, still- <laughs> it's, 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 it's still like like you still have like nine hundred and ninety nine million dollars left. True. Yeah, after it's that, it's true. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I don't know if things would be that different. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I'm sure you know you get used to a lifestyle when you have that much money and then you're like, how do I go back from this? Right. Uh, like I'll never be able to go back to non central air after moving into a house with central air. Yeah. Oh, I'm so spoiled. Right. Uh, yeah. so there's things like that that I, th- I think would happen eventually, but like thinking about it right now, all I can think of is like probably golf some more. Yeah. Well, and it, but, but I, I think that that's another part of this is like people dream of absurd wealth, but to like do the things like to having insane excess, yeah. like incredible excess, like it, most people are like at the, like, I'll spend a, f- a few million dollars or something at the very tippy top end. Yeah. And anything beyond that is like, that's, that's just too much. It's you know? too much. Yeah. I, like, we already eat great. We, yeah. you know, I am I'm so thankful, you know? Yeah. Um, so I can't imagine. And you just try and buy some, uh, I guess Kirby art or something or. I, yeah, I guess so. But then like, you know, I do love collecting original comic art, but yeah. there's a point where you're like, you know, I'm going to own this and then what do I do with it? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. I want to share it. Yeah. And, uh, so trying to make sure that I'm being healthy with even, th- even in my scope of like what I'm spending, trying yeah. to be healthy with it too. You know, I have too many guitars. So. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I think the, the lesson that I pull from that of like, you know, even with insane excess, if you have the opportunity to spend on insane excess, people generally don't go that far. It's sure. like, you know, I think generally the things that people want are a lot closer to home than, they might think you know i agree um like for you golfing more it's like um like you you, you just require more time at that point <laughs> you know it's like you need a second i do daniel johnson to to, to like I do. go golf for you or do your art and stuff and, it's a beautiful day today i should just go today yeah, yeah i wanted to go today but yesterday i wanted to go yesterday but it was raining yeah and like cats and dogs yeah. and flooded my apartment yeah. right in my basement yeah yeah <laughs> um but yeah I, I think uh i mean i i meet a lot of people and a lot of students who are like really wanting that success and that glory and they want to get become great artists and sure. stuff and i think often the thing that i run into is like people don't necessarily need like art instruction they don't need to be told how to do something they need the encouragement they need like sure the like the road like a structure or something mm-hmm. to to keep it you know or did they, they almost need um, permission to start you know yeah um and yeah I, I, I don't know i think um uh, that permission, like somebody teaching somebody how to draw a, like a Loomis head or something, is way more permission than it is, like actual like good advice or something. Sure. You know. Yeah. But, um. Just the yeah the the kick in the pants. Yeah. To just make it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, back to the AI art thing, you know, if if there's one thing AI art AI art has done, it's made me very appreciative of people that are still figuring shit out. Oh yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's like I look at I look at you know non-professional artists work yeah. with a new eye of appreciation yeah me too which yeah. is like actually kind of cool it's pretty inspiring yeah yeah, yeah. it's like very raw and like you yeah. know it hasn't you know it's like ai art is ai art looking at this their art to make no their computer generated images no like these right. it's like the the growing pains of an artist yeah. showing in the work that just goes to show just how valuable all art really is yeah. you know even the art that you're struggling through yeah, you know, yeah it's not like over. not ready yeah um that is very special absolutely yeah yeah and again i think it, there's always a ton of reasons not to do it but ai has become the loudest in recent history just because people are not used to it and, yeah you know that i i, I i'm kind of having the same thing of just like look, looking at new artists and be like oh man you're really you're really like having a lot of faith and really putting yourself out there in a way that I think it's actually super cool and, yeah, and brave. That's that's really fun. Yeah. What's this on the wall here? Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, all my guests, I have a I have a new board that I'm gonna ask you to do a sketch on. But all my guests that I have, they they do sketches on. So um, I had a like the director for the He-Man show. Awesome. On uh, Eric Guest, uh, Joe Casada did the Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, Alvin Lee, the I can't remember that character, Street Fighter character. Uh, Steven Silver, the uh, Kim Possible designer guy. Yeah. Uh, Stan, obviously. Uh, Rembert, my buddy who worked on a bunch of Riot Cinematics. Uh, I was up, I jumped off a bridge in uh, Montana. Okay. 
Uh, that's the bridge I jumped off with a friend. Uh, Did you paint that? No, no, no. A, a friend of mine. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm. I'm away. I, I just shouldn't say I'm a bad draftsman, but <laughs> compared to a bunch of these people, I'm like, oh man, these people are so good. <laughs> uh, Zach Retz worked on Spider Move, Spider uh, Spider Verse, and stuff. Uh, and then that guy did the logo for the Joe Rogan podcast. Oh, cool! Um, uh, t- tons of musicians and stuff. And, awesome, man. But oh, I guess I'll have to add to it. Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. Oh, right on. But yeah, I, I, I don't know. The whole point of this thing for me has been like, uh, like trying to understand more about what real, I guess, like professional creativity is. You sure. Know? I think a lot of it has to do with like taking risks and like somebody said something to me once. It's like one of the biggest realizations of their life was realizing that they could be anything mm. and then the second was they can't be everything you know mm-hmm. it's like you can be a comic artist but you can't be a professional gu- uh, guitar player or you yeah. can be both but then you can't be a father you yep. know and you have to make choices and sacrifices and like that idea is like r- you really have to decide what you care about and be okay with the sacrifices mm. because no matter what you do you're going to regret it at some point in your life okay you know? yeah and um, everybody I've talked to, they all have had like, I'm really glad I did this, but it's been really hard and it's been really stressful. And it's not like, I'm not the person that people think I am. I'm not like the glorious, like it, it, it wasn't all sunshine and roses, no, no matter how much people want to think it was. Sure. You know? Um, and yeah, I, I, I mean, I, something I wanted to ask you about is like, we were talking about a little bit of the rock star energy of being a comic book artist. And like, I, I know that it's like, for some people it's like almost too much you know sometimes mm. and sometimes it becomes like uh, addicting or any of that. Do, do, do you have any opinions on that or um well you know scooping poop water out of my <laughs> it's pretty humbling uh, basement bathroom will yeah. bring you down to earth real fast yeah. um you know having a family and being you know not be holding, uh, caring for them and, and making them as, trying to make them as my first priority. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not always successful when it comes to work and family. Um, it's something that keeps me very grounded, I think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's also, uh, I don't, I mean, I go to some shows, but, you know, social media is almost like fake yeah. in a way, you know, so it's like all this noise. Yeah. And all you have to do is like turn your phone off and nothing matters anymore. Yeah. So it's good to like be able to do that and make stuff in a vacuum without that pressure. Yeah. And sometimes I try not even to think about it. Yeah. You know? And it doesn't even really hit me until I go to a comic con yeah. and there's people saying hello and wanting pictures, yeah. which is really great. Yeah. Um, but it's good to come home and like be asked to change my kid's diaper. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I remember I was listening to uh, Dave Grohl <laughs> give an interview. Sure. You, 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 you might have seen it, but he was talking about how like he would come home from like playing a hundred thousand people some insane concert, some insane Foo Fighters concert, and then his daughter would be like, what are you going to make me a smoothie, you know? <laughs> and it's like... Yeah, my daughter does the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, again, I think it goes back to that idea of, like, no matter who you are, you can't escape those, like, life things. Oh, no, yeah. You know? And uh, people look... From the outside in, it looks like... Someone who might look at you and be like, oh, man, like, Daniel's super famous, and they see the art you've done and everything that you've, like... They see you in every comic store or whatever, and it's. Um, I think it's hard for somebody from that perspective to think about them ever being in that point. You know? Sure. Um, and yeah, I, I don't. Know, I feel silly almost talking about this stuff because it seems so simple. It's just like just do it. You know, just create, put yourself out there, and just see what happens. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, and it's just. It, I think along with that, you know, there's a journey there of a fine line of being okay with kind of who you are as an artist in the moment and being yep. at peace with that while also pushing yourself to be better yeah um that's i don't really know how to do that <laughs> yeah. like because you want to be healthy yeah and i think it just takes time and intentionality in a way that is uh you know something that happens in months and years not in days yeah and uh it's a lifestyle yeah um but all along with that you know i don't even necessarily i still don't really think of myself as like famous yeah. yeah i'm like uh comic book famous yeah which doesn't really count <laughs> yeah 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 i mean the, the fame is all relative you know? it's all relative I, I was talking to a friend who he, he's a pretty well-known illustrator now but he was saying like oh yeah if you have 200 people following you you're the most famous person in your small town in ireland or something because sure. that's a big that's a lot of people like, yeah like if 15 people live in that town and 
200 or 10 times that or 20 times that follow you that's pretty insane you know and i have it i have it the best because like you know if i want to be recognized all i have to do is like go into some sort of comic book store or a yep. uh, comic show yep. and uh you know but i can go into the bank and nobody bugs me <laughs> uh, and yeah. then even i'll go into a comic book store and people still don't know who i am yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty crazy <laughs> yeah but they, 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 they probably know your work at least I, I, they, sometimes yeah. you know there's nothing as humble salad inducing as like going up in a comic book store and be like hey i made this uh, can I sign this for you? And you're like, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Brings you right back down there. It's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's good. It's good. It's, it's healthy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I had a really smart question that I forgot. Sure. So I, for, I forgot what it was. So. Okay. Oh, uh, you forgot. Oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot what it was. Um, yeah, I, I guess, uh, um, the, uh, I guess the glory stuff and the fame stuff. Like, have you ever have you ever felt like you were at a point where, like, I, I guess like imposter syndrome or anything like that, or like where where you felt like you don't you sh- like they don't deserve it. Yeah, or, or something. They don't belong here. Yeah. yeah. Um, not really. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do. But those thoughts have been pretty few and far between. Yeah. I, uh, for the most part, I feel quite good about like where I am and how much how hard I've worked and yeah I think part of not having that imposter syndrome is just like being very open with all the people that I've learned from and taken inspiration from yeah and like not hiding that yeah um you know I'm standing on the shoulders of many giants and uh Simonson Kirby you know Ueyama Masamune Shiro you know Otomo and then more um more recent you know like without james heron's work i wouldn't be here yeah i just wouldn't be and he's working in comics today he's he's maybe a little older than i am yeah um so i want to be open about that you know where i've where i've come from because it's just you know without those lines i wouldn't be here you know yeah it wasn't until i really saw james's work in um bprd's the long death that i was like oh like he's doing this in comic books he's getting published you know he must be getting paid something to make it. I think yeah. I want to do that too. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I think, uh, again, going back to the reasons you shouldn't or anyone shouldn't be doing art is like, it's easy to look at your heroes or somebody that, you know, anybody in the industry and being like, Oh, they're already doing it. You know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be contributing, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, like no matter how somebody, how, how somebody, how similar somebody feels to another artist, I think inevitably standing on those giants, uh, like their own unique voice, just, it, comes out organically just by creating stuff I agree. you know yeah because like the more you grow as an artist you know you start from one place and you're continually evolving and you as a person is evolving as well at the same time and that just equals out to you looking different yeah you know and it's like there's a uh there's a, i think there's a growth that happens in almost every artist unless someone is actively trying to like ape somebody yeah um, in like an unhealthy way, yeah, yeah, you know. But like, I see, <laughs> I see many up and coming artists like uh, drawing a lot like me and laying out panels yeah. and pages in a way that I do. And there are some things where it's like I can see exactly like the, I know yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> which drawing they've <laughs> yeah. drawn this from. Yeah. But it doesn't bother me because yeah. like they're they're figuring it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. like they see quality. I, you know, I believe that a lot of my work is quality. Yeah, it's but, sick. You know. Well, that looks sick. Yeah. I'm going to make that my drawing look like that. Yeah. And then a year's going to go by and they're not going to do that anymore because yeah. they've already learned and they're trying to move past it. It's just yeah. the natural order of things. Yeah. Well, I, 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 we were talking about yesterday and you're saying that you wanted you got into art initially because you pers- you were pursuing like concept art, right? I was. I mean, like I uh it was like in my sophomore summer of college. Where I, my mom had bought me the Art of the Lord of the Rings book. Oh, sick! Yeah, yeah and I was like, yeah. I could see myself. I've seen doing that. Yeah, I've seen that book. Yeah, yeah. it's great. It's yeah. out of print. Yeah. Um, I treasure it. Yeah, because <laughs> it got me started on the, just even thinking about commercial art. Yeah, um, and being able to make stuff that wasn't just like for art class. Yeah, and uh, so it was originally concept art that I was trying to break into, and yeah, I did have trouble with the digitalness of it. Yeah, but I hadn't learned that about myself yet. You know, yeah. I was still trying to force it and figure things out and things were looking too pristine and clean and yeah. 
I need to figure out how to get dirty, which yeah. just ended up me having to be yeah. using pen and ink. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and again, it, 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 it always starts out in some... It, like, it, start, it has to start somewhere, yeah. right? And starting out with, like, aping a little bit of your art or something or, you know, making it similar to, you know, you or James Herron or Jim Lee or whoever else. It mm-hmm. always starts there, but then it moves towards something else. And yeah. I think it, I think it's been cool watching a bunch of the old Wildstorm guys start in comics, and now they're all, sure. they've all moved to like Riot or something, and yeah, working yeah. in games and concept art, and like like and being art directors for these really big projects, mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty neat to see. It's like a yeah, Joe Mad does games now. Yeah, too, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Mad was a huge. I love his art. So, so wouldn't sick. be here without Joe Mad either. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I still draw eyebrows like Joe Mad sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, the, his art and his like um, the, the, like the whole battle battle chasers thing in general is like oh, it's so. So Perfect. I have an yeah. original page up in my studio. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Let's all check it out. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Um, but it, like, I, I guess on a broader scale too, like looking at World of Warcraft. Yeah. Know, dude. And compared to like uh, Warhammer, it's yeah. like oh, it's like pretty much the same thing, but it's like a little bit different. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah, and there's something I think that's it's kind of celebratory about that kind of like, you know, yeah, butter that's on every bread kind of vibe. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's it's a comforting. Yeah. And uh, you know we're all playing off the same tropes yeah. and and learning from each other and things the things evolve little by little and then every yeah. once in a while you'll have just this huge outlier that's really special to see yeah yeah when well, i i think the individual artists like a lot of people are are looking for that like you know something that will distinguish them and something that is like allow them to make a living and all that and i think yeah. generally like having a little bit of emulation in your artwork is is, is actually like one of the only ways to do it you know i think it's very rare where somebody is only they're like self motivated and self-inspired to to do stuff i don't Mm. i actually can't think of anybody off the top of my head that is like exists completely in a vacuum but creates great artwork you know i mean i guess there's no way to really find that out but i would i'm inclined to agree with you yeah i feel like there needs to be stuff coming in so that you can put stuff out yeah that's how i operate yeah yeah man yeah um We've been going for, I think, about like forty-five minutes or so, sure. or anything. Is there any, uh, anything you want to talk about? Or? No, dude. I'm, this is really fun. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, it's, of course. It's super cool, of you. Um, how should people follow you online? Uh, well, you know, I Google my full name, you'll find me. Um, I have a YouTube that I, I go live every Friday, which is pretty fun. Yeah. Um, and that's you know, it's all free and nice. Just hang out, come and hang out, watch me draw, and I, I don't talk a lot, but uh. You know, apparently people have told me that it's soothing. <laughs> <So> super <laughs> into it. Nice. Like it's like they say it's um, uh, like comic book Bob Ross vibes. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that compliment all yeah, day, all day. Yeah, yeah. it's good so, vibes. Yeah, man. Cool. Well, uh, thank you so much. Thanks, cool. guys. Cool. Sick. Oh, I